What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for coming back and checking out another video. If this is your first time stopping by to check out the channel, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. If you like fun, family, wholesome videos, it would certainly help out what we're trying to do here on the channel. So tonight's topic, I just got back from the AT trip that we had to cut short because of a thunderstorm coming in and uh Figure maybe we'd all like to go through some what worked, what didn't work, what I'm going to change for future hikes type of video. So if you're interested in the gear I took, the gear that worked, the gear that didn't, stay tuned. Let's go. All right, so let's first start out with the most... Mm, some of the most important gear, I think. The shoes. So this was the longest hike that I've taken these shoes on. I bought them not too long ago and took them on a couple of short hikes, warm around the house a little bit to break them in, but this was the longest, most difficult hike that they've been on. This is the Ultra Olympus 4, and they're a good lightweight shoe. They do have a rock plate built into the sole that did help a lot walking over all the rocks on the Appalachian Trail. Um, they held up well. There's nothing that's coming apart. So these shoes have probably close to, I would say 75 to 100 miles on them total from the time that I bought them. Not all trail miles, but just total around baseball fields and around the house and to work and on a couple of other small hikes, plus this hike, probably about 100 miles. Everything stayed together well, very comfortable. Uh, what I don't like about them is two things. One, I had some ultra temps, and they had a, a bungee right here on the top so you could tuck your laces in. That was really nice to keep them from flopping around. I had to take these and shove them under the, the clip where the gator goes if you're wearing one. And uh, my Solomons had a, a like a line log situation. Then they just rolled up and stuck up under the tongue. So that was really nice to keep them out of the way. And the second thing that I didn't like, they got the they got a very aggressive sole and obviously the wide toe box. But they've got these on the heel from the sole that just kind of stick out a little bit. I may actually take a knife and shave those off because they're a little bit clunky. Uh, there was a couple of times where stepping over a rock these these little fins on the back would would catch a rock as i was trying to maneuver around it so i don't really like that but they're light they're zero drop lots of cushion still and uh, overall love the shoe my feet were comfy not a not a complaint let's move on to the next thing all right so next up something that i didn't think really meant a lot you know there's a lot of people that will have uh, gossamer gear poles or leckies or something that are super super light and but they cost a ton and i picked up these carbon ozark trails from walmart for like 30 bucks and they've been great poles but uh, i like the locking mechanisms they work great but there was a lot of steep descents on the appalachian trail and this top piece, while it's still intact and it hasn't come loose, it's a uh, it's a little loose, and it almost it's almost really it's not like a soft rubber. It's kind of more like hard plastic, so I could kind of feel hot spots coming up on my hands on those steep descents where it was rubbing instead of gripping it down here. And yeah, I had my hands up here on the descents. It was kind of rubbing my hands because that's not very soft. So that may be something that I change in the future. The head on this one actually is a little bit loose. It's still intact. I don't think it's gonna fall off, but it is just a little bit loose. But overall, they've been great poles. Uh, the locking mechanisms work great. The tungsten tips on the end haven't worn down. And these poles actually have quite a bit of miles on them from different trails. Uh, the, the cork at the top is nice. I don't ever have them in a, in a position where I'm using the, the soft foam a little lower. But all in all, good poles. I probably will upgrade these in the future for something that's got a little softer top piece on it. Next piece. 
All right, so next up, I'm just gonna start digging stuff out of my pack. We'll talk about it as it comes out. Um, first thing out is the trash bag. Obviously, the leave no trace principles. Always pack out everything that you take in and uh, food trash. Nothing really to talk about there. Next up was my rain jacket. We left before I had to break this bad boy out, but I did break it out one night, as you saw in the video, just to kind of break the, uh, the wind chill. It's just the frog togs, the cheap frog togs from Walmart. Worked great. I haven't uh, been through any briars or anything to test its durability and see if it's gonna rip up, but the frog togs for the price, you can't beat it. First aid kit, it's just a cheap little first aid kit. Also from Walmart, I think, Adventure Medical Kits. It's uh, I've taken a lot of stuff out of it. Um, primarily just uh, some Band-Aids, um, some Afterbite, some uh, Body Glide, in case you get the chafing. I keep my Tenacious tape in here. Doesn't weigh a whole bunch. I think in the, in the future, I may, uh, take the stuff that I really use most of the time out of here and put it in a Ziploc just to save weight. The pouch itself is kind of heavy. Dude wipes, that is my uh, preferred method of cleanup. After a long day's hiking, I like to give myself, you know, the hands, the face, the legs. I use dude wipes for all that and pack all that stuff out. Uh, there's 48 wipes in here. I'm not exactly sure of the weight of this thing full, but it was in my bag. My bag, when I left, completely packed with food and water and everything, weighed 32 pounds. That may give a stroke to some ultralighters, but for me, that's actually pretty light. When I first started backpacking, my stuff was 50 pounds. So 32 pounds is pretty good full of, with full of water and food and everything. But uh, this is the preferred thing that I like to use out on trail for clean up after a, a long day. My spoon, got the Tokes long handle titanium spoon that the mountain goat gifted to me. I was carrying a plastic spoon that I paid like 50 cents for at Walmart before this, but the mountain goat found it uh, appropriate that I have a titanium spoon and I like it pretty good. Tent poles, tent stakes. And let's open up the main body of the pack here, right on top. Is the tent. So the Marmot Tungsten 1P, I actually did a gear review on this tent when I first got it. A really good tent, something I learned about this tent though. Um, the trip before the Appalachian Trail trip, I had this out and it stormed really good the night that, that we were out and it kept me completely dry, fantastic tent. Um, night two, I believe it was on, that, on this trip, I set it up in a hurry. We were in a kind of a crappy camping situation. I set it up in a hurry, I was ready to go to bed. So the rain fly has Velcro on the back side that you're supposed to Velcro to the poles. And I didn't do the Velcro. We weren't expecting wind, we weren't expecting weather. I just staked everything out, tightened it down real good, and I didn't do the Velcro. If you get this tent, make sure you do the Velcro, because if you put the rain fly over it and you tighten everything down and you don't do the Velcro, that rain fly is gonna cause your poles to suck in on each other, and then the, the netting of the body of the tent is gonna be hanging right on your face when you're trying to sleep. So make sure you always do the Velcro. Another thing with this tent, is uh, obviously it's a uh, one person tent, so it's tight inside already. With my new air pad, which is about four inches thick, my toes are now up to the point where it touches the body of the tent. There's no condensation that's ever gotten in it, so it doesn't seem to be an issue, but if you're six foot or taller, it might be something for you to consider maybe getting the two person version of this tent just for the extra room. Other than that, great tent. I plan to keep using it. Oh, one more thing about the tent. Um, I'm not gonna untie it, but it's got the shepherd's hook style tent stakes. I'm gonna replace those with the MSR groundhog stakes because I don't, there's a couple of real 
tough rocky areas where I had to use another rock to beat these into the ground. And these shepherd hook style tent stakes did not like that. So I'm gonna change these out. For water, I just carried two one liter smart water bottles. Uh, they worked fantastic. Obviously, I think uh, a lot of people carry smart water bottles, so nothing to see there. They work great. My chair, yeah. Two pounds of my 32 pounds is this chair. I just, uh, I like my creature comforts, okay? Don't judge me. But I, I have a Marchway backpacking chair that I got from Amazon. It weighs a whole pound more than the Helinox chair, but it also only cost me like 28 bucks. So I figure for 28 bucks, one extra pound isn't gonna kill me. Cook system for me, good old Stanley pot. It's hard to beat. Folds out, got a nice handle. You don't have to worry about burning yourself or using a buff or a rag or anything to get it off. Got a nice plastic lid for boiling water. I would leave it up like that. Never have to worry about it burning my hand. Inside, I stored all my, the rest of my cook system, which is, First of all, my cup. This is a Sea to Summit collapsible silicone cup. One can of fuel. Um, I went to Sportsman's Warehouse. They didn't have the MSR cans, which is what I usually use. So I got the Jet Boil, Jet Power fuel canisters. And while essentially they're the same, one thing that I did notice about this, when I would screw my stove off after use, every time with the MSR can, you get a little hiss of gas that escapes when you take that stove off the top. And that doesn't seem to happen at all with the jet boil can. So maybe they have a better uh, valve system on them or something like that. But so moving forward, I won't use the MSR cans. I'll use the jet boil cans. For my stove, <clears throat> the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. It's light enough, it's, uh, it folds out, it works great. I've never had any problems with it. It boils water quickly, easy to use. I know a lot of people will get the cheaper, maybe even lighter version, the BSR, I think it is, on Amazon. That's fine if you're worried about the extra ounces. I'm really not. Uh, like I said, 32 pounds is good for me. And this stove hasn't failed me yet, so I'm gonna keep using the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Uh, cheap gas station lighter, and a microfiber towel just to clean the, the water out of my pot before I stick that canister back in there to make sure nothing rusts up. Next is my hygiene bag. So to clean my spoon and stuff off, I don't use my dude wipes. I, I clean my body with those. So we just got some napkins there. This is actually usually in my food bag, but we left in a hurry. So salt and pepper shaker. I'm gonna have some tissues. I have terrible sinuses, so I blow my nose. I use tissues. And then we got some toothpaste, a uh, little travel size soap that I got from a hotel, some deodorant. Uh, washcloth, or actually half a washcloth, and half a toothbrush in there. That's the hygiene. Put this back in the food bag. All right, next is the food bag. So this is just a cheap uh, compression sack that I got from Amazon. It worked great for storing all my food. And I also was able to hang it pretty easily from this uh, grab handle on the bottom at night on a bear line, see what food we got left. So in the future, I probably won't carry that much beef jerky. I wasn't really in the mood for beef jerky anyway. So this is all the food that I got left, but keep in mind, uh, we cut our trip two days short. So let's see what I would have still ate. Uh, the summer sausage, I would have still eaten. Um, snacks, I would have still eaten these snacks. I would have still eaten, um, probably would have ate those for lunch. And 
This is a would have been breakfast for Thursday and breakfast for Friday. And then I would have had one of these two for dinner on Thursday, which would have left me with just one extra meal. Um, in the future, I probably still will carry an extra meal, mainly because I like to eat. And if I get to camp one night and I'm super hungry, like day four, then I'll eat two suppers. Or maybe I could even eat one of these for lunch. It's always better to have too much food than not enough food, in my opinion. Camp shoes. Now, ordinarily, I would carry Crocs so I can put my sleeping socks on and still wear them around camp. Uh, but I couldn't find my Crocs. I asked my kids if they knew where they were. They, nobody knows where they are. I couldn't find them, so I had to use the flip-flops. They were lighter. They packed up easier. And uh, if we're hiking in good hot weather, I'll probably continue to carry these just because they help my feet air out. Next is my Puffy. So this worked great. There was a couple of mornings that I put this on just when I first woke up because it was a little chilly in the morning. But better than that, it served as a second pillow at night. I could just put this on top of my other pillow that you'll see in a second. And I have two pillows. It's nice and soft. It worked great. So I'll continue to carry this. Next up is my fire bag, and here I just have some uh, fire starter, another lighter, um, some cotton swabs that are soaked in Vaseline, makes an excellent fire starter. We didn't actually end up using any of this because we didn't start any campfires at night, but always carry something, it didn't weigh that much, always carry something to make sure I have good ways to start a fire in case I need it. Next up, the sleeping pad. The Big Agnes, Aircore Ultra Insulated, 25 by 72. This weighs more than my old sleeping pad, but it is extremely comfortable. I highly recommend this sleeping pad for anybody looking to get a new sleeping pad. Now, I will say this, I think the R value on it is 4.2 or 4.3, so it is, I mean, it's an insulated pad. So it's pretty warm. So if you sleep hot and you're hiking in the summer months, don't take this pad. Um, I'll probably continue to take it and just sleep with my blanket half off of me or something like that because it's super comfortable. But uh, if you sleep really hot and that's something that bothers you, pick a uh, maybe this pad in the non-insulated version. Next up is the pillow. Got the Wise Owl Outfitters, the snoozy camp and travel pillow. Uh, I don't remember the size of this exactly, but it's a pretty comfy pillow. It's uh, it's big, but it's not as fluffy as I would like for it. So in the future, I'm probably going to look for a different pillow to take. Not bad, especially for the weight. It doesn't weigh that much, but it doesn't pack up very small. This is twice as big as your typical Nalgene bottle that everybody likes to compare things to. So it takes up a lot of space, and it's comfortable, but not comfortable enough to to take up this much space. So I'll probably trade that out for something different. Next up is the Outdoor Vitals Mummy Bag, size large. I don't even I don't even think they make this anymore. I actually picked this up off of Amazon, but maybe they do. And it's in an Outdoor Vitals compression sack. Compresses down pretty small. <coughs> this is a synthetic bag, if I'm not mistaken. It's super warm, it's pretty light. Doesn't weigh a bunch, compresses down pretty good. So, I don't know. I mean, it was cheap. It works good. Would I like to get a nice down quilt someday? Sure, but for the money, this thing works fine. It doesn't weigh a whole bunch. It does take up probably more space than a down quilt would. But uh, for now, it works fine. I'm gonna keep it. Let's see, platypus. Uh, water bag. We just filled this up with dirty water and filtered it off. It worked fine. Um, one thing, one thing that's maybe because it's a platypus, when we screwed the sawyer onto it, it dripped just a little bit, and we made sure the sawyer had a good O-ring in it. So maybe just the threads are a little bit different from a platypus to a sawyer. 
So in the future, I might go with uh, Sawyer bags or maybe like an Enoch or something that's got the big wide mouth so you can scoop up a bunch of water. There was one spot we got water where filling this up was kind of a real pain. So I probably will trade this in on something that's got a wide mouth opening on it. The good old Sawyer, can't go wrong with that. The Sawyer Squeeze. So this was mine, the Mountain Goat had one just like it. Um, I got the uh, sport top on mine. Obviously you could take that off and put a different top on it. For his, he's got the uh, gravity feed tube that goes to it. So we can just put a gravity feed tube on here and a, a bottle or the platypus bag on the back side of it and then filter it right into a, the uh, smart water bottle. So it worked out, it's real easy. Definitely keeping this all your squeeze. My headlamp of choice, which luckily I didn't have to use, is just the uh, Go For Wild. Got it off of Amazon, but it works great. It has a, a couple of different brightness features. It's got a flash, it's got a red light, and it's got a motion sensor. And for the price on Amazon, it's super cheap. Actually came in a two pack. And I think I paid like, I don't know, I don't want to tell you what I paid because I don't remember. I've had these for quite some time. But it worked out great. It's not that heavy. They're rechargeable. So no complaints with my headlamp. I'm definitely going to keep that. And the one thing that's not in my bag, I may have taken it out of the car, is my Diddy bag. So in my Diddy bag is just a, pa a battery power bank, a cord to charge an iPhone, and a cord to charge a USB-C which is what I run my Flextail Gear mini air pump on, which was fantastic. I'm actually disappointed that it's not in here because I really wanted to talk about it. But last but certainly not least is the bag itself. So the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60. Here's what I loved and here's what I didn't. So what I loved about it, it's a pretty light bag. If I'm not mistaken, you can, it's got a little metal frame in it, but you can take the frame out. You can see the frame right there. You can take that frame out if you want to go completely frameless, but I like a little bit of structure in my bag and it weighs virtually nothing, so I keep it in there. Plenty of storage space. I love the big outside pocket where you can put things and let them dry or whatever the case may be. I love the way the side pockets are. The only thing that I... Another thing that I did love about it is this, the back piece, right? So you know on the Mariposas, you can take this back piece out and use it as a sit pad. We'll always carry a chair, always. But if we were just stopping for a water break, um, we stopped for lunch and I'll take my shoes off and just let my feet get some air. I'll put this down so my feet didn't get dirty. I just put my feet on it. But if we were just stopping for a second and it's not worth digging your chair out for, Pop this bad boy out, set it on a rock, sit on it, help greatly. Now, what I'll probably do in the future is Gossamer Gear makes one that breathes a little bit better than this one. So I'll probably order that and use it instead of this one. This one does get a little bit hot on your back, but it works fantastic. The one thing I didn't like about the bag is about 20 miles into the trip, and I don't know why, but the shoulder strap on my left side developed a squeak. And I don't like a noisy bag. And for whatever reason, maybe it was the way that I had packed it, I'm definitely gonna keep this bag because I, I do like it a lot. But if the shoulder strap continues to squeak, it's gotta go. I can't keep this bag. It's got great hip pockets. It sounds like I still got some snacks in there. The hip pockets were great. It was a very comfortable bag. It's light. I don't, uh, no complaints from that. So if you're in the market for a new bag, I highly recommend the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60. It's a fantastic bag. So that's it. That's everything I carried. 32 pounds with water and food. Again, I had five days worth of food. So what you saw me take out was only a portion. The rest of it was in that trash bag. But uh, loved it. I'll probably change out the pillow. I'll probably change out the type of water bag that I carry. Uh, what else? That's it. And I'll make sure to always do my Velcro on the tent. 
because that tent was uh, atrocious to try to sleep in with those poles folding in on each other. And uh, hey, that's it. So as always, if you got good gear and you can sleep comfortably and travel comfortably on the on the trail, it's not a bad life. If it's a dad life, come on.